right, the videos. Okay, yeah, recording has started. Yeah. Okay, before we get started, we should at least introduce ourselves, so, or for the audience. Yeah, I'm also doing a recording backup just in case this fails. Alright, me too. Alright. Alright, uh, I'll get started since I'm the one who's got this all together. Alright, I'm Jacob, I am Thunderbolt94 on YouTube. And we are go we are doing a point by point response to Eslin two two seven's videos. All right, who's next? Uh, um, I'll put, all right, you go ahead. I'm Brandon at Decrash on YouTube. All right, Philo. I'm Philo. I'm also known as the Dutch philosopher on YouTube. All right, Evo. My name is. Will, and I'm an alcoholic. No, no, wait, wrong meeting. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Will, and I'm Evo Jet videos on YouTube. All right. Chris? My name's Chris, and I am violently graceful on YouTube. All right. Dar? I am Dar Anak. Not Dar Onak, but Dar Anak. And. Daro Knack is my YouTube channel because the zeros look like O's. Alright. Uh, Daniel? My name is Dan and I'm Brandon Mrs. D912. Alright. Hippo? Uh, I am Anthony. I prefer Tony and I am Hippo11222 on YouTube. Alright. Okay. We're missing Stuart? Oh yeah, Stuart. Go ahead. And together we are Wild Stallions. And just for the record, since this is being recorded, since this is being being since this is being recorded, everybody's channel will be linked below. I know that whoever's going to watch this will not see Darnuk's picture up there. That's because I'm recording it, but. Everybody's channel will be below. All right, all right. Um, YouTube team assemble. Again, we have a group of mixture of both atheists and theists. So we have mostly Christians, and we have one secular theist who's not a Christian, and we have two, 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 two or three atheists. If I got that correct. So we're going to start from part two of Esplin's videos and. The rule is we're gonna we're gonna take it clip by clip. And if anyone wants me to stop the video to make a point, please let me know, and I will stop the video to make the general point. But other than that, I will Have stop. I will stop the video at specific points so we can discuss what what has been said. Is that all right with everyone? Uh, sure. Fine by me. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Let's. Okay. We're gonna start here. Yeah, I get really busy too. I have videos that I've been making to make for months. Um, like that YouTube video I made about you, James, with the movies I wanted to watch. I've been thinking about making that since I started my channel on YouTube like months ago. So, so let's get started. Now, I'm going to address one point. You seem to have a problem with the whole notion of why I don't take comparisons of God with the flying spaghetti monster or Santa seriously. You seem to have a big problem with that. I do not take those comparisons seriously. Here's why. The main reason is they boil by the end of the day these these comparisons end up boiling down to a semantic game. Only to someone who completely misunderstands what those arguments were originally made to Illustrate, like you, unfortunately, uh, and William Lane Craig, which you use later, which is just... they are useless comparisons to an idea of what we are, what theists are claiming. Uh, no, they aren't. Um, the flying spaghetti monster argument has nothing to do with what you're claiming. What you're claiming is actually inconsequential. That's why they use the flying spaghetti monster instead of something more plausible. Um, again, you completely misunderstood what the flying spaghetti monster analogy is supposed to, uh, illustrate. Yes, sir? Any thoughts? Yeah, I, I'd the like flying to spaghetti monster uh, is truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, 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 it
I find this a useless to being analogous to uh, God, whether it be the Christian God specifically or a theistic version of God, because proposing that these are like necessary properties, this uh, conglomerations of noodles and meatballs, uh, that would not fit. That would be a contingent entity. That that wouldn't even be close to or analogous to what we theists mean by God. And so the other thing is that it wasn't. Um it wasn't thought up to combat the idea of God itself, but the idea of an intelligent designer. Yeah. As well as the fact that, like, nowadays it's much more used by atheists and agnostics to kind of say they, they've created pastafarianism, which is to kind of say, you know, you may see this, see this religion as ridiculous, but we find all the religion ridiculous, so just respect our religion and stuff. From what I from what I looked into, it was originally used to combat uh, intelligent design, and lay people kind of it, it popularized it to uh, use as kind of a parody religion. Like I'm a post, I'm a postarian, raw man. Pretty much. Right. Well, Stephen, what, what the argument is that he keeps mentioning? I mean. I can understand the uh, analogy with the spaghetti monster, but he uh, you, he called it an argument. And uh, does that refer to any kind of uh, discussion you, Jacob, and Esplan had that he used it in some kind of argument form? Uh, not re- I don't no, I don't recall specifically. I only mentioned that um, flying spaghetti monster analogy to another person in the comment section of one of the previous videos. Because the guy was trying to make the uh, flying spaghetti monster Santa Claus analogy. Uh, for, uh, I, I feel like this kind of uh, the analogy, not only is it not accurate, but it kind of has a mind of its own when people use it as a tool of ridicule. And in the philosophical world, that's a fallacy. Appeal to ridicule, I don't care why you use ridicule, it's fallacious in the philosophical realm. Uh, right. it, that, that's why I was wondering if there is any substantive uh, argumentation uh, in which use this analogy uh, because we, I believe we can all agree that uh, the idea of a spaghetti monster being the cause of the universe is uh, practically impossible because No we can't uh, <laughs> you, you agree? So it wouldn't be analogous it's not that he's proposing that it's real it's just this wouldn't be uh, analogous because it, it wouldn't even be possible to have a necessary entity made of contingent parts. Exactly. Uh, as, as I as I've seen, you know, that at least that first video all the way through, with you know, along with the uh, along with uh, Thunderbolt here, uh, I can at least let y'all know he goes quite a bit deeper into this, but it doesn't really get any better. So I would say that we need to continue to get a bit bigger picture of what he's saying. Jake. All right, let's continue then. So he's playing parts of my clip. So it's just just for the record. Claiming that God is a necessary being that created that created the universe. That is what we're claiming. No, that isn't what you're claiming. You're claiming that God is a necessary being that created the universe and many other traits you're applying to him. That's what the flying spaghetti monster argument is dealing with. It knows. It's granting you that first premise. Hold on. Stop. Stop. Well, I, I just have to, to point out, the flying spaghetti monster is not an argument. It's a parody. And for yeah. him to compare it to an argument is... <laughs> how the hell do I put this? That's, that's what confused me as well. Yeah. What's he actually saying? He's giving it more weight and credence than it actually has. And I don't have a problem with the flying spaghetti monster analogy with parody religion or anything like that. But the thing is, something that's meant for a laugh or to, to, to take the piss out of religion or creationism in general, you know, that that's not an actual argument. Right. Also, it's, like, it's, like also the, it's, it's like the stuff on the onion is actual news. Right. And, and that's, also, that's exactly and also what he's, he's doing. Mm-hmm. And also he's talking about, you know, it's... It, um, I think Jacob, in that, in that video, you were you were saying that that um uh, what was it uh, that about a necessary being, and he's like it's giving you that, and I was like no, it's not because the very fact about a necessary being, you know, it, it's one of those arguments that 
that is that, that has pretty much just showed that the flying spaghetti has show how ridiculous the flying spaghetti monster is because it's not a necessary being. Yeah, and uh, w- w- did he did he use? I think he used another uh, compared it to like Russell's teapot. Yeah, for he did. Example yeah. of the flying teapot. Uh, the problem is that's not a necessary entity either. Uh, all uh, what Bertrand Russell meant was basically uh, uh, posing something which has so many ad hoc features that it's unfalsifiable. Like the teapot is invisible, it's flying at such a fast speed you can't detect it, and that's, that's what Russell so meant. Uh, so this would not does be Does he have to construct an argument predicated upon the flying spaghetti monster, or, or does he just... It seems to me he's just uh, saying, no, you're wrong. Not yeah, and he doesn't even give an example. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I'll, I'll play devil's advocate here and try and give them a hand. I suppose you could say that because obviously the flying spaghetti monster is an incoherent notion. I suppose you could argue. Well, obviously this gets into the concept of God. You could probably argue that it's a comparison. Well, God's an incoherent concept, but of course you need to actually show yeah, that. So you're not, you I'll have still, to show that, you know. Well, argument. This it's just an argument by analogy. If an if it's <laughs> if it's an argument at all, which it isn't. But <laughs> well, the, the problem is what I meant by when he didn't give any examples is he said the spaghetti monster were saying we're giving you that, but uh, yeah. you're, what you're proposing is that God is necessary and uh, with all these additional properties that aren't necessary. But he didn't give any examples. Like, uh, I, I, think well, he vaguely, I, I think he vaguely gave this uh, analogy. Well, what about when it says God enjoys the smell of burning flesh? Is that necessary? Well, that, um, that wasn't even part of the original argument to begin with, because we weren't arguing for the Christian God. Mm-hmm. Just kind that's of a general one, idea of God, then? Yes. Um, yeah, that's one thing that God. many... I say I say many atheists. By atheists, I mean atheists like Espen, not like probably. <laughs> well, I don't want to be disparaging and use it to. Uh, but basically, a lot of atheists on YouTube tend to think, "Oh, it doesn't prove the Christian God," which isn't, which is doesn't matter at all. Well, I I would like so. to say that a lot of people like the the arguments that people tend to say, well, you know, it doesn't prove the Christian God. Like people bring up Kalam and so, well, that doesn't lead you Christian. To the Christian God, it leads you at least to deism, and yeah. I have two points uh-huh. to make for that. One, what do you think deism is? Don't treat deism like this middle way between atheism and theism. He even brought that up. Deism is a subset of theism. Deism just yeah. is just a general God. Um, while deism is specifically referred to that God created the universe and He kind of let it go off on its own. God yeah. does not directly intervene through the act of miracles. Uh-huh. So that yeah. is a means. And number two. My, my second objection would be that um, for what he's objecting to, I mean, I just, I just don't, I really don't see a, a good, this, this is being a, um, a good analogy. Uh, I, think uh, you... I, I, I just, it's not, it, Kalam uh, or whatever argument you do, what people would object to say, well, it doesn't prove the Christian God. Well, it never was intended to. And yeah, it really was done by Muslim that, philosophers. In yeah. fact, I, in fact, I, I was on a, I was in, a, in, 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 in Jacob Kelly, I was in an argument with an atheist on fa- Facebook a couple of weeks back. The, the whole deal w- w- was was with that. I was trying to help her to understand that that the Kalam argument is not an argument to prove the existence of any kind of God. It's just saying that you know it's it's it, and it's also not to say that it it proves the existence of God. It just says that that the existence of God is possible. If yeah, it, it, it only lays out a general God as well. For all these arguments where they're talking about the moral argument or the Kalam, all these arguments argue for a general God, and if you say, well, it doesn't prove the Christian God, it makes you wonder if you've really read up on the material, because the people that popularize these arguments have addressed that over yeah, and over. Assuming for the sake of the argument, the steps of the arguments are sound to begin with, because if the arguments are sound, then it would, it would only prove a general theistic conception of God, and not necessarily the Christian or Muslim God. That's yeah. kind of where the whole faith thing comes in, too. Mm-hmm. All right. Needing for specific arguments to get to a specific God. I mean, William makes big points this out all the time, yet you still get... Then again, nobody ever accused these people of actually paying attention to his works, so... All right, I think we should continue. All right. Beat egg. We're granting you that God is a timeless being. 
that created the universe. What we're dealing with is everything after that. Why does that timeless entity need to be Yahweh Elohim? Why can't it be any okay. other God? Stop it. Stop, stop. What's that? Stop. Stop it, and and here was the point where I was where I, where I was like, where I was like, where on earth did he did did, did make him even say that the God they were talking about was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? That was the Judeo Christian God. This is where I think that this is where I think that Esplan is really just going off on a tangent. Uh huh. Yeah, because it seems he, he likes he wants to continue the argument and. Um, I, first of all, he, he said, we, we grant you that the theistic God exists, but why is it the Christian God? Um, is he uh, trying to just simply move on the argument from, okay, okay, um, we're going to say God exists, so now give me any reasons to believe that it's the Christian God. And who the hell is we, by the way? Exactly. Yeah, that was the kind of manner of we. As it's it's as like he's appealing to authority, as if you know the majority of atheists agree that there, there is a god, and but we just don't know if, if it's the Christian god. But that's yeah, I know people that won't even give you that. That's not atheism. So yeah, I know people that, that wouldn't even give you that. It's, uh, I, I'm gonna <laughs> have to take a little break again. Okay, okay, that's fine. It seems to me like he's shoehorning that that particular uh, argument in there. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, <laughs> if he admits that the, that a god exists, then why is he so? <laughs> so obviously, he, I think he's doing it just for I the sake of argument. A hypothetical, I, I think he's doing a hypothetical. Like, yeah. We'll get yeah. to this hypothetically. Why yeah. the Christian yeah. god? Which misses the whole point of the argument. All right. Let's continue. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Flying spaghetti monster. Is that an improbable? Example? Yes, it's improbable on purpose. It's improbable because just as you cannot show that your God is jealous, like you say, like the Bible says he is, that he enjoys the smell of burnt flesh, kind of specific, isn't it? Tell me, is that necessary for the creation of the universe? Go. Wait, hold on. Oop, hold on. My computer. <laughs> Right. Really, really, just on that, it seems to me like he's making a whole bunch of, he's just going off on several tangents anyway, and, and really tangents that go and that's not impeccable to hold up the whole up and discussion. Hold on. I'm sorry, is that a friend? Yes, it is. Oh, I was going Actually, there's reverb coming from Philosopher. Yeah. Okay. It's breaking up badly. I'm wondering, am I using the reverb? No, no, no. It's coming from philosopher. He he needs oh, to turn okay. down his his uh, mic setting on Skype or his volume output on Skype. This is what I was. Uh, what I was. All right. Um, you want what, was, what was your point, Brandon? Okay. What I was just trying to say. Let me see if I can if I can get my thoughts straight here. Is that he seems in that right where you stop, uh, Jacob? Is that He's going off on, on a tangent here that he's, he's not only going off things that have absolutely nothing to do with the argument, but the whole thing about uh, the, the, the smell of burnt flesh and everything like that. But also, well, of course, I know it's not part of the discussion. This is a, like a totally different story for a totally different time, but he's just putting forth a lot of things that really are just are born of uh, misconceptions anyway. But um, okay. to, to me, that just looks like he's going off on, on a tangent. Okay. So I, I'll just point this out. I think some of these things are red herrings. Yes. All right. Let's continue. All right. I just wanted to. Oh, I've completely forgotten what I was going to say. Thanks. Thanks oh, a lot, Jacob. Sorry. All right. <laughs> All right. If you remember it, yeah. just bring it up again, okay? Let me continue. We can compare because they are not necessary beings. If you want to show, if you want to demonstrate that they are necessary beings, like we're claiming that God is, you have to demonstrate that, that Santa Claus. Flying spaghetti monster are timeless, spaceless, immaterial beings that created the universe. No, we don't have to demonstrate that. That's the point of the analogy. We're granting you that premise. We're uh, granting. Uh, you that. Yeah. So the problem um, here is 
you would have to show that they have those properties so that they are properly analogous to to the god of theism yeah. or as even well the the christian that, like, specifically because that would be uh, or it's not analogous Santa would not be analogous to what we're talking about as well as the fact that if the flying spaghetti monster was a timeless, spaceless, immaterial being, then it wouldn't be a flying spaghetti yeah. monster. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's, there's like one point. In, in the debate that William Lane Craig had, I think it was Lewis Bolport who who um, argued, you know, why does it have to be God? And argued that why can't it be a computer? But then when you get down, when you, when you get, basically it's just semantics. Um, well, he yeah, has it. Yes, it on the video. Yeah, because what what happens with the computer is that it's just it does it, it has all the computers that would that would keep inhibit it from being a necessary being. I mean, yeah, and if you say well, it's an immaterial computer, then but it's not right, it oh. makes no sense. Yeah, exactly. Rob, the property yeah, of somebody, the, the, the closer it gets say, to being God, it's the lesser it becomes what it's supposed to be. For example, a computer. Or otherwise, if you're going to say God is a computer, uh, it will cease to be God. It will be less of God and more of a computer. Mm. Right. It, hang on, hang on. I remembered what I was going to say about how he keeps going on about burnt flesh, is that he seems to be predicated upon the premise that unless you can prove every aspect of the Christian God to be necessary, then the whole argument's bunk. That seems to be what he's what? suggesting. Like, what? unless yes. you can... <laughs> Which I just think they call that a uh, house of cards fallacy. The slippery slope. Right. For one uh. thing, it would be it, the, the whole point of the whole burning flesh, where uh, where it gives um, descriptions of the Christian God that might be considered anthropomorphized, and then with the whole thing with jealousy. Um, this is not jealousy, this petty feeling uh, of envy. Yeah, uh, it, it's more of a defending uh, of the precious of people rejecting. Who God is well, is basically the source of goodness, and by doing that, you reject the good. Well, the and thing with certain um, parts of the Old Testament is that you have to really understand it in like the uh, Jewish cultural background of, of the ancient Near East. I mean, like, um, what, like, and also when you know people make a big deal about how Jesus says you have to hate your family. That's an exact. That's an example of um, exaggeration and like hyperbole. He's not saying you literally yeah. have to literally hate your family. He's um, it's like they, you know, it's basically yeah, the, the essence of the yeah, like, put God above your face. It's like the scripture about he loves five people. I think we should like, Basically, uh, the one that doesn't put God at the center of their life is not worthy of All right. I just, just real quick, I, I agree with that. You kind of have to understand the culture or the people that wrote something before you can, you know, fully understand it. Like the philosophies, the, the the time and the culture in which they live, the the kind of geographical settings in which they live, you know, I mean, it kind of explains a lot of the things that they write. Yeah, because a lot of people today, and including some Christians like uh, KJV onists, seem to think that reading the Bible in English is a is a valid ex exegesis when it's not. <laughs> it's right. like most people would think. Reading the Bible in English is okay, but I say not so fast, though, so... I would at least say to a humanities so. class that brings up, you know, ancient Hebrew history or something like that, or ancient Hebrew culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to, like, know every aspect of it, you just have to do some basics. I mean, it's not hard. Well, it's Although, you just provide that much more record. Just a little, uh, just a little, uh... Uh, I suggest anyone that has any questions about that, you should probably look up Cartesian Thies video he made on divine jealousy. I thought that was a pretty pretty good video that he made <coughs> that I would address that issue right there. I think we need exactly. to go ahead and continue with the video because we are kind of out of time here. We're kind of going on can yeah. <laughs> Let's continue. That a timeless, all-powerful entity created the universe. After that, you have to demonstrate any specific characteristics you attribute to that all-powerful entity. That's why we're using the example of flying spaghetti monster. We can't show you. We can demonstrate. 
demonstrate that it's all powerful and that it created the universe. Not because we actually can, but because we're granting that premise. We're in an agreement to grant that premise. What we're asking is why does that thing have to be Jesus? Is it not ethnocentric to think <laughs> that you figured out that entity? Even though your evidence is interchangeable with every other religion, what makes you think that that entity is not a flying spaghetti? We don't have to show you that those things are necessary. We don't believe in those things. We're showing you that your argument only gets you to theism. We're showing uh, you that uh, <laughs> yeah, See where he says that thing to theism? Theism doesn't mean that. That would get you to bear. It, it, let's see all these argue these uh, argue. Would just to get you to general theism. It wouldn't get you to theism. It doesn't prove God doesn't intervene. It does not intervene in the natural world. That's what theism means. If you use it like that, I really question if you even know what theism is. And that's the thing that that's the thing that Jacob and I were talking about last night. It's just uh, to me, it seems like this guy does not understand his terminology. He doesn't understand philosophical terminology. And I don't think he really understands religious terminology. He's talking about well, religious it's deism. But you have he to... Does, you, see, sorry, continue. Go ahead, go ahead philosopher. I pretty much made my point. Oh, well, but by the way, <laughs> just, just to, to just even to understand it. anything about religion at all, when he says every aspect of Christianity is interchangeable with other religions, that is absolutely ridiculous. I don't think he said... I, I don't think he said Christianity itself. Uh, well, he, well, he, he said a so specific course, religion and that's interchangeable with any, everything else. I think he meant the concepts of the God proved by, well, demonstrate, that the argument seeks to demonstrate. I think I think what he meant was, like, to saying, like, can we prove like, that God exists in general and that all the monotheistic religions share very similar concepts of God. Well, he basically said that all the other religions, including the one of your God, when he was talking to you, Jacob, are all interchangeable. Who even says that? The, 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 I wouldn't say that the, my uh, the Christian gods' properties are interchangeable with uh, the Hindus' pantheistic uh, conception of God. I wouldn't agree to that at all. Well, some there religions are even atheistic like themselves. Like, uh, yeah, like Buddhism. Buddhism. Some, some traditions of Buddhism and uh, Hinduism are atheistic. Some are pantheists. Some are some beyond that, and also how, like, in certain religions, like, um, uh, like the Egyptian, uh, Scientology. That's a cult, not a religion. Uh, uh, well, so, some uh, sects of Taoism are actually like that. But, um, how, like, in the Greek, if you look at the Greek mythology, the gods don't create anything themselves, they're created. This is, like, um, how, like, everything emerges from, like, the, uh, some chaotic form of events, and then, like, the gods emerge. Then, yeah, from the chaos. Literally. Literally. Yeah. I mean, the, these uh, these uh, these philosophical arguments would probably be ca uh, compatible with perhaps deism, uh, uh, just general theism, uh, with Christianity in particular, Islam, um, non-Messianic Judaism, um, you know. Well, I think uh, it's only really compatible with, I'd say, monotheistic religions or pan or maybe possibly polytheistic religions that posit only one supreme creator really mm -hmm. so, I would think it only speaks on the creator and not like other okay uh, I think that the often the the so that we so at least I think it has well, well, yeah. yeah well for uh, a uh, if, we're, if, if we may, if we just gave one example of like I, I don't know Kalam Okay, everybody stop for a moment. Okay. Jacob, you're reverb you're reverbing and so is philosopher again. Okay. Okay. So is it good now? It's still happening a bit. Okay. Okay. Okay, philosopher, turn down your mic setting on Skype. I'm, uh, I'm on it. I tried to turn down the volume, but... Yeah, like, you need to turn down the mic setting that's on Skype itself. That will help help it out a lot. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm kind of a new on Skype. Uh, let me see. I guess it's under tools, options. Actually, move your mouse over the call. 
and the ascending bars that's on the right hand side of the bar that pops out if you click on that a box will pop out and there will be a section for speakers microphone webcam and computer he's gonna go i'll be back in a minute <laughs> all right that's fine so. is that the uh thing with um and call and then mute your microphone is that the thing yeah, the bar that yeah. pops out when you move your mouse over the call, on the right-hand side of that, that there's a box and there is like an ascending bar. If you click on that, another box will pop up. If you hold the mouse over it, it says call quality information. Yeah. Click on yeah. that, the first option that pops up is uh, microphone options. And it says automatically adjust, so I should... Yeah, unclick that box and move it down. Is this where it's at? Let's see, let's see, one, two, one, two. Yes, much better. Okay. Can we edit this stuff out? Yeah, we can. Yeah, you're still recording this, right? Yes, I I am still still recording. Don't worry, we're going to edit this afterwards. Okay. Yeah, I I don't want my uh, ignorance about Skype to be... <laughs> don't worry. Don't oh, worry. We'll, 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 we're going to edit it out anyway. So, mental load. Don't edit it out. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, can, can you? Is that, yes. Is that, is that yes, Hippo. Can you, Go on and okay. continue. For example, if we're going to use things like the clock, uh, you would, it wouldn't be analogous uh, with uh, something like uh, the, pol- uh, the pantheon of Greece, where these are physical entities. But on the Kalam, the conclusion leads to God being immaterial, so be compatible with Zeus or uh, Athena or any of those. Uh, uh, right, because we're not talking about a physical God at all. So when we, you mean it's interchangeable with all their other religions? No, it's not. There's some religions that would, in fact, be excluded from our, our definition of what we mean by God when we make these arguments. So, but would you say that some of the monotheistic religions have similar conceptions of God, like say Allah versus uh, Yahweh, something like that? Yeah, for yeah. sure. It, that, that would be where they're they're more they're compatible with these arguments. Yes, yes. That's but uh, can I, I give you theist uh, a thought experiment for a moment? Where sure. I, I I think I, I I see where Espen is is coming from. Even though that he says we are, are given theists the concept that that there is a theistic type of God out there, um, I, I I think that's exactly where he is coming from on his own, and asking you to explain that if there is is such a thing as a theistic type of God to explain what your concept. Of that theistic God is like how would you how would you explain that the deity of the Bible is is true if he grants you that a theistic God does exist well the first yeah. thing, well I'm sorry the first thing we would have to do is if we're gonna argue philosophically we don't start from Christianity we would argue Christianity later if we're gonna argue for Yahweh when we're using these kind, of, when we're using these kind of arguments. We're not arguing for. You. We're not assuming that that God is Yahweh right away. We, it's like the, if okay. we were to say the cosmological arguments for the sake of the argument are sound, the most they could do is prove to prove a general theistic conception of God. We right. acknowledge that it, the, these arguments do not prove Yahweh or Allah. Okay, but like he, uh, just as a thought experiment. Say that um, Esplin grants you those arguments that a, ge- a general theistic deity exists. How would you go about proving that 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 general theistic deity is the deity of Christianity? Well, we'd have to have arguments that the uh, resurrection is true. That's uh, where um, I think arguments from history come in. Exactly. Um, I think that's, that's uh, the point. Yeah. that Esper is, is, is mistaken about is uh, later on in, in this video he talks about reveal knowledge and um, 
sure that there, there are attributes that we can attribute to this ultra mundane uh, creator, uh, such as um, agency, uh, such as uh, at least uh, enormous power. Um, we can attribute those things, and we can also attribute that he is uh, the foundation for morality, whatever that is. Uh, we could argue that, but uh, certain attributes um, yeah, yeah. we can attribute to him uh, on the basis of the veridicality of Jesus' claims and their um, Christianity uh, really shows oh, that their, uh, an argument can really show that Christianity is the is the truth as long as it is actually true that Jesus yeah. Christ rose from the dead but that's a whole different argument yeah, and it's yeah. also not really a philosophical argument either. I mean, I mean, obviously there's like philosophical. Well, it's it's just the yeah. philosophy of there's, history and stuff. Well, yeah, obviously there's the there's the stuff like uh, what's you know what counts as historical knowledge and can miracles be identified as historic historic? If, and but the, other than that, it's mostly like well, it, it's predicated upon well, is there like good evidence for this event? I think. I mean, obviously, like, um, uh, the odd thing about Christianity, and also I'd say Judaism, is that they're mostly, I mean, it's, they make a number of historical claims, whereas other religions are primarily uh, philosophical, like, uh, removed from, like, their um, moral teachings, primarily, and or metaphysical claims that can't be um, examined or proven, like, like uh, I'd say. Okay. Okay. That I, I, I just I, I just wanted that recorded for for Esplin for later. But, okay. All right. So you guys want to continue? I'm I'm going to ask you guys to go on for about another. Uh, come on. Uh, about another ten to twelve minutes, and then I will stop the recording. So go on. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's continue then. Okay. Claiming that. That may be one of the things you're claiming within a framework so you can then push your other dogma. But that's inconsequential to your beliefs. You need to show beyond the amorphous concept of a creator. You're not claiming that. You're claiming specific characteristics. That is the that is what the flying spaghetti monster argument is trying to show you. Even if it's unnecessary, you need to demonstrate why it's necessarily Yahweh and Bohim. Why can't you grasp that? You are completely sure. <laughs> this is excellent. So is the pinky. So is <laughs> Not because of the structure of what they are. You can't prove that that teapot created the universe. You can't prove that that universe is there. The point is, is until you can prove something is there, you cannot attribute much characteristics to it. Oh, oh, oh. Well, uh, okay, oh, so okay. uh, Guys, before, uh, before we continue, could we um, uh, just for uh, I, my sake, but also other people, Try and be as quiet as you can, because whenever somebody laughs or something, the audio goes down and I can barely hear it. All right, sorry about that. I don't know if, ever, if somebody else is suffering from that problem, but... Uh, oh. Sorry I, about that. No, 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 no problem. I would encourage laughing because it's good, but in this case, uh, okay, you can't sorry. hear video. <laughs> okay, so I think, I think a way to start is... First of all, amorphous. We all, he already granted timeless. That is a property. That's not that, with no definite property. Are you kidding? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's assuming a lot in that in that statement. He's saying how the like, spaghetti monster <laughs> argument is um, um, somehow demonstrating this when the flying spaghetti monster is an in, is incoherent with the concept of God. That we're that he's already granted is incompatible. The, the yeah, but he seems to jump even from, from that. He says, uh, "I grant you this," and then suddenly he says, "No, we don't grant you this." 
Yeah, well, uh, if you no, have we do grant you this. I mean, what, what, what is your position, really? Uh -huh. This is uh, the word amorphous. It can have no definite properties by saying it's amorphous. Uh, no, you just granted timelessness. Uh, so what, what, what's the deal here? And also, amorphous doesn't mean no definite properties. It means it should be shapeless. Mm. Really? I think we well, should yeah, yeah, yeah. for no amorphous for form. I'm, uh -huh. guessing what he, I'm guessing what he means by amorphous is that the concept of God that, we're, we're, that these arguments seem to establish is an amorphous burlap sack rather than like a tight-fitting glove, which, yeah. is, which is something we would not disagree with. I mean, he doesn't prove specific gods. We know. Amorphous <laughs> would actually apply to something closer to an amoeba than, uh, you know, uh, some, something like a, like a god, I guess. Yeah, a spiritual being. Thank you. Yeah. In a spiritual being, shape doesn't apply to it. It has nothing to do with whether it has a shape or doesn't have a shape. Well, if, well, if it's a material, sure. then it's, it's not. It's nothing at all. You know. Well, well, just to, just to clarify, there are several definitions. Uh, amorphous can include lacking definite form of no particular type or lacking organization. I'm thinking he's so using it as a Either way, that doesn't that doesn't uh, zero in on the way he's using it. He's misusing the term amorphous. Well, he's using it colloquially um, as a colloquial synonym, like say general. Or right, or we, we're or talking not. philosophy. We're not using colloquial terms here. Girl. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not it's not what? that big a deal. It's just yeah. Uh, he has a tendency to misuse terms. Yeah, exactly. I guess. Yeah. It's kind of strange right. when when the play this this discussion is he. Is he talking in a purely philosophical matter, or is he uh, simply venting? Because sometimes, um, well, not sometimes, probably the majority of the time when watching the video, I felt very uncomfortable because he he doesn't he he seems to be overcome with emotion when talking about certain yeah. things, and it, that that seems to me uh, to be a, a a lack in character. That doesn't demean his arguments, of course. We but tell, well, it doesn't. It doesn't. Demean, it doesn't affect the quality of his argument. Uh, does. Exactly. Exactly. But it's it's strange because uh, is he saying this in a particular way, uh, trying to convey a specific meaning, or is he simply trying to use big words to? Uh, I'm not Sounds saying that not intelligent, but. Is he trying to use big words to make his case stronger, or is he uh, is he just, or is he actually trying to say something with those words, which would seem incoherent? If if, if I can mm -hmm. just quickly uh, see this this conversation that we've been having. I just, I just I, he doesn't want to I come would, off as you know much more emotional over this. He should probably script the video a bit better. Okay, I think we should continue. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I, I would probably just say to finish this up, uh, just, to just for like a, a final word on that before we go on. If he meant just by amorphous shape, then so what? We already know. We already defined it as so what. And if he defines it as having no definite type, then denying what you just gave us is, is given. So. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay, before you go on, before you guys go on, I'm going to stop this this 